If I told you that the human race would go extinct because of climate change, you would believe me. If I told you that we would go extinct because of overpopulation, you might believe me. But if I told you that simple plastics could cause our whole race to go extinct, you would look at me as if I was some crazy conspiracy theorist. How in hell could this simple thing cause our downfall? How could this thing that is literally everywhere help kill us all? This is not something that's going to kill us all like a meteor crashing on the earth. It's not something external, but this will happen internally. And no one will realize it, and when people will realize, it's it's going to be too late. Something that seems so insignificant and so unimportant can actually have much bigger consequences on the human race than ever thought possible. Plastics have huge indirect consequences on humans and the first time people realized it was during a study done on fish. A study done in 2015 has shown the dark side plastics and more specifically BPAs and EE2s can have on the human race. Scientists put Japanese fish called Madaka in the fish tank during their embryonic development phase. They did something special with this fish tank, which was that they infected its water with hyper concentrated amount of BPAs to see how it would impact the fish in their later life stages, compared to another fish group that was put in clean water. These fish stayed in that water for 7 days and what they concluded from the experiment is this. Nothing. Nothing had happened to the fish. Well, what's the point of this study then if nothing happens? The consequences appeared later on. No special mutation happened, no weird changes happened to them. But when the fish had kids, the scientists realized that they had 50% less babies than they should have had compared to the clean water group. This generation of fish that was exposed to this hyper concentrated amount of VPAs didn't experience any real external issues, but half of them became infertile. The study kept going and the next generation of the same fish were almost 100% infertile, without being exposed to the BPA. The study had to stop after this, but three generations were sufficient to get the species extinct. What they did was repeat this experiment with EE2s. A moderate amount of this chemical was put in the fish tank compared to the hyper concentrated amount of BPAs. What they realized was that it led to about the same results. These fish would have been extinct if they didn't stop the experiment. Now this can lead to a question about how much this also affects us. Because it's not big news that we are constantly exposed to chemicals like these. How much do they actually impact the human race too, compared to the Japanese fish? Plastics first appeared in 1907 as a combination of two chemicals called formaldehyde and phenol, which would then be named bakelite. These were cheap and could be easily mass produced. This is when we first saw the appearance of Perma Camera, the GPO telephone and the Echo AD36 radio, which then went on to become iconic 20th century products. Later they realized they could use this plastic to conserve and transport food much more easily and slowly we started to see an exponential rise in plastic use in the world. The production increased, the use of them increased, but this also led to a huge pollution problem we have nowadays. This is something everyone had been aware of in the past decade, but whoever thought about the impact it had on our fertility. The BPAs used in the study are everywhere. Plastics, food, water, soil, air and many more. The amount of this chemical is astonishing and even though companies produce BPA free plastic bottles, they still contain chemicals that are bad for us and sometimes even worse. Every time a company has to delete an ingredient from a product, it has to replace that ingredient to make it usable. The only real benefit it brings is that people believe it's good and it calms them down. This is mostly done with food. Whenever the fat is removed from a product to make it fat free or low fat, it tastes disgusting. Which is why they have to replace the fat with something else. This usually comes in the form of added sugars and other chemicals, which in most cases makes the food even more unhealthy. But the simple sign that says low fat reassures people even if the product is worse in the end. People believe it's good and so they're happy. This same method is applied to plastic bottles. They remove the BPAs to make people happy but add other chemicals that are usually worse than the previous one. BPAs have been found in hyper amounts on receipts for example which most people keep close to them in their wallet. They're also very present on plastic and not only plastic bottles but also your keyboard, mouse, phone case, controller, water bottle, computer and the list goes on and on. Everything around us is made out of plastic and these chemicals are on all of them. Every plastic contains chemical particles that can cause our generation of kids to be infertile and we already might be infertile without knowing it. Same goes for ee 2s These chemicals are found in oral contraceptive pills for women. Birth control pills contain this chemical which is causing women to be infertile and yet millions of women are taking it without question. The human mind is very simple. It thinks mostly about what feels good right now. It thinks about what is pleasurable right now and the short term benefits birth control gives you is amazing. Eliminating the risk of pregnancy is a great short term benefit, but few actually consider the impact it could have on the future. Because our minds are so focused on what feels good right now is also the reason why we have so many problems problems with addictions. Whether it's social media, video games or smoking, they all give us that short term dopamine hit we crave, without considering the health issues they will cause later down the line. 
What happens to women who take this pill is this. A higher concentration of EE2s than which was used in the study is ejected into the water every time they pee. The dose of EE2 used in the study was a moderate one compared to the higher dose of the ones found in water waste. These are chemicals so small that they can't get filtered through our cleaning processes, which means we take them in on a daily basis. Our water is infected with these and even though it's a small dose, it's still something we have to consume every day. EE2 then also works by suppressing ovulation. This is because the suppression of ovulation can lead to a decrease in number of quality eggs available for fertilization. This may seem very far into the future for some people, but there is something else that affects us right now. These two chemicals, besides having very negative effects on fertility, also affect something closer to the heart of men, which is testosterone levels. These chemicals are known to be endocrine disruptors or can have an estrogenic effect, which essentially means that they will interfere with the body's hormones and hormone production, including testosterone. BPA has been found to have an estrogenic-like effect on the body, which means that it can mimic the action of the female hormone estrogen. When BPA binds to estrogen receptors in the body, it can disrupt the normal functioning of the endocrine system and affect testosterone production. This can lead to lower testosterone levels in male, which can have a range of effects on their health, including reduced muscle mass, decreased bone density and lower sex drive. Exposure to BPA has also been linked to reproductive issues in both males and females, including reduced fertility, abnormal sperm production and changes in menstrual cycles. NEE2s have a similar effect just like BPAs affect testosterone. EE2 is known to have the potential to affect testosterone levels in the body. It works by suppressing the release of certain hormones from the brain including FSH and LH, which are hormones responsible for stimulating the production of testosterone in the testes. Therefore, by suppressing FSH and LH, EE2 can lower testosterone levels in the body. In fact, some studies have shown that long-term use of EE2 containing oral contraceptives may lead to decrease in testosterone levels in some women, which is also crucial for women. As these chemicals that we can find in everyday products like plastics, which are everywhere around us, food, water, air and many more, can disrupt our hormones. This means that they also have an effect on fertility in males by decreasing testosterone. Testosterone is a hormone that is important for the development and maintenance of male reproductive tissues, including the testes and the prostate gland. Testosterone also plays a role in the production of sperm. When testosterone levels are low, it can lead to a decrease in sperm production and quality, which can result in infertility. Low testosterone levels can then also lead to decrease in libido, which can make it difficult to conceive a child. With all that said, we can wonder how this will change the future of our world. As these things become more and more used, we also saw other negative sides, the increased pollution, the animals suffering from it, and other environments problem. And as people became more aware of those problems, we started to see the rise of movements to avoid this from growing even further. This then meant we tried to reduce our plastic problems, but it's still massively used in our world because it's so cheap and easy to make. Plastics are everywhere around us and it's almost impossible to avoid them. The first generation to be really exposed with this were baby boomers and Gen X, which were our parents and for some even grandparents. Since they got exposed to plastics, BPAs and EE2s, it might actually be the case that we already have signs of infertility. In fact, about 15-20% to of the world population is already infertile, whether it's in developed countries or developing countries. This would mean that if our parents have been exposed to these chemicals and that now 20% of the world population is infertile, this would mean that if we keep going with this trend and that if the fish study also exactly applies to humans, then about 50% of our kids would be infertile. This would go on from generation to generation until no one is still fertile and we end up with an elite group of people that control the last few people that are still fertile. This elite group would have control over the last fertile women and men. These women would then be used as breeders and their only purpose in life would be to produce new babies. This can already be seen in the movie Mad Max, where women are used only for breeding. They are kept captive and forced to produce healthy children for the ruling class in the post-apocalyptic society depicted in the movies. The term breeder is used to dehumanize and objectify these women, reducing them to nothing more than means to an end. As much as this seems unimaginable, we might actually end up in a situation like this, where fertile women and men become the new elite because of this extreme value that they have to the human race. We can't produce kids through science and this would become the only way. 